Alexa, kitchen lights on. Okay. This video will cover the design and layout considerations for this long 25 foot counter space. The objective is to add counter lights with overhead color lights and in cabinet lights in the darker cabinets that are on the bottom. As with all LED projects, the first thing we need to look at is where could we possibly get power from. Fortunately on the right side in one of the wall cabinets there's a power outlet. The counter lights will be mounted facing the backslash for ambient light. The counter lights are mounted on this aluminum cap providing a shield to keep the reflection of the lights from being seen on the granite counter. The aluminum will also help with heat dissipation from the warm 50-50 LED lights. To power the right side of the counter lights, a wire was simply run down from the power location to below the cabinet. To power the left side of the counter lights, a wire was run up to the top of the cabinets, across the top, and down on the other side of the microwave to the counter surface. If you watch some of my other kitchen videos, you'll see that I use a lot of motion sensors. This would be the logical place to put a motion sensor in this kitchen. However, it would likely extend into the walking area and trigger the lights when you walk by. Putting the motion sensor at the other end would require us to run the power 16 feet to the motion sensor to start the line. There was a desire to have ambient light available, illuminating this nice backsplash on demand. And I saw the Alexa there on the counter and we looked at it and decided, hey, what if we tried Wi-Fi? So we ended up putting the Wi-Fi controller in to control the counter lights. It actually worked out really well. Now you don't have to worry about triggering the lights when you're walking in an area outside the kitchen. You don't have to worry about them turning off when you kind of want them on. Uh, and you can sit there and control the dim and other aspects from wherever you are in that area. Illuminating the ceiling was going to require approximately 32 feet of LED light. We decided on this analog LED kit, which worked just fine. When we got up to the top, we determined we had to cut the lights into approximately eight sections and then rejoin them back together. This particular cabinet set had some molding on the front. The molding was mounted on a board which extended up behind the molding. We decided to mount the lights directly on this board, which is in really good condition, a nice flat surface. Uh, would move the lights away from the wall and help cast on to more the ceiling than the wall, which was not white. One attribute of these cabinets is that when you got to the stove and uh, one of the other areas, the box cabinets actually raise up. That required us to go to the back of the cabinet, drill a hole to get up to the next level, and then do the same thing to get back down. The single color controller controls both 16 foot lengths of LED wire. To accommodate this, we had to run the power to the top of the cabinet and then down several feet so that we ended up approximately in the middle of where the two wire LED wire strips would be. The cabinet power is an always on loop. To get to the lower cabinets, we ran the power into the adjacent tall cabinet that was next to the power source location. We ran down to the lower cabinets, and then we ran about 15, 16 feet in one direction and 10 feet in the other direction. Because of the length, we decided to use an 18 gauge uh, trunk wire, which we ran along the back of all the cabinets. We then fed off that wire to the switch locations in each cabinet. Limit switches were used for all the door and drawer switches. I cover these in my video on LED switch options for doors and drawers. With the main feed in the back of the cabinet, once the door switch is installed, you need to run a cable from the feed line to the first switch. If you're doing a single door, you simply put the light on that switch and you're all set. If you're going to do two switches controlling one light, you then run off the power feed to the far switch, just the positive wire, and then you would run that positive wire back to the positive side that will activate the light and then go ahead and install your light. If you do use these switch models, be sure to cut off the center post uh, because you don't want to accidentally short out the system because that center post becomes hot when the door is closed. There is another option for wiring. I ran the 18 gauge in the back to carry the power longer distance. If I'd used a 22 gauge the entire length, I had the option of running the 22 gauge directly from one switch to the other and eliminating the terminal block in the back of the cabinet. It makes it a lot easier to manage and connect the wires at the front. The penalty of course is now you have to get an extra set of wires into the switch location and hide those wires in the front of the cabinet so that when you open the cabinet it's not unattractive. To get the wires from the power location to above and below the cabinet, we simply used some wire management to hide the wires and we cut a notch out of each shelf so we could run the wire from the top to the bottom. I cover how to make this wire management in my wire management video. Leaving a pile of power supplies on a shelf uh, looked rather unattractive. 
to help manage that, we went ahead and made this power supply management location. Uh, to do that, we simply uh, screwed one board onto another. We cut a slot into it. We left a gap in the background so we can hide wires behind it. Uh, we put a short board in the front so that the connector wires could be hidden behind that. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and, and we put some nails in there and we zip tie the board, the power supplies on. You could also use Velcro or double-sided tape uh, to accomplish the same thing. Uh, you may recognize this collar wood. Uh, this is out of my uh, entertainment center um, that we redesigned last year from a bookshelf. And uh, you can see that video online as well. There were two drawers under the stove top. And these drawer slides are soft closed drawers, which are different from the drawers I covered in my putting LED lights in drawer video. So the one di difference to accommodate these, these drawers can ride a lot closer to the side. So to put the switch in, rather than put the strike plate on the side of the drawer, we went ahead and put it on the top edge of the drawer. And that way, when the drawer slides open and closed, we are able to hit the switch and uh, activate it. The controllers are both supported by Magic Home software. Magic Home software is the software you're going to use to talk to the controllers initially. One is a five channel and the other is a dedicated color, RGB. Now we needed the five channel because uh, it happens to support uh, two, one color and we're using just that one color functionality. So Alexa understands the basics of instructions. It understands on, it understands many solid colors. Uh, we were a little disappointed it's important to see that it didn't support rolling through colors. However, we could do that in the Magic Home software. And if we went ahead and turned off the lights with Alexa and turned them back on, the controller returned to its previous state. So you could accomplish that that way. So let's go ahead and uh, show you some raw uh, Alexa video here. We're gonna take you through some colors and then we're gonna take you through the Magic Home software and show you some of the options there. Alexa, camera lights on. Okay. Alexa, dim counter lights to 10%. Okay. Alexa, kitchen sink lights on. Okay. Kitchen ceiling lights on. Okay. Alexa, turn kitchen ceiling lights to yellow. Alexa, turn kitchen ceiling lights to blue. Okay. Alexa, turn kitchen ceiling lights to purple. Okay. Alexa, change kitchen ceiling lights to 20%. Okay. Alexa, change kitchen counter lights to 80%. Okay. Alexa, Kitchen lights off. Okay. So have the app open. We will adjust it to do ceiling lights. We will go down to functions. We will scroll to seven color crossfade. It changes rapidly. This is the speed. It's at 100%. I could slow it down to say 50%. And it takes more time. It's about 30 seconds, give or take, for each color. Put it back at 100%. We can go to green strobes. And go to red strobes, seven color strobes. If we want, we can customize it, which we won't do right now. <laughs> um, if you wanted to do music, we could select our music by artist. We like Michael Jackson.
and we can go back to home and if we wanted to we can adjust the ceiling lights ourselves manually by color by brightness green orange blue we can go back we can take the ceiling lights turn them off we can go to counter lights Make it brighter and dimmer. Brighter and dimmer. Go back out. Oops, sorry, go back out. It shows 38% for the counter. Let's make it 100%. 99% ceiling lights. Sorry. Turn them on. We can leave it for the color. So this was groups. Oh, sorry. You could turn off the group. And on the group. Cool. Hopefully you found this video informative. Here's a link to the switch video, the drawer video, the wire management video, and another kitchen door.